All right, welcome and thanks for attending this how-to webinar. Uh, today we are going to be talking about the save and load selections. Uh, my name is Aaron Leacock. So we'll get started here. Basically the save and load selection list is going to allow you to save selections from either a selection dialog window or from the model and allow you to recall that selection at a later point by loading it. So we're going to start in just a dialog, a selection dialog window. In this case, I'm just going to go to my CNC and go to my downloads. So in here, if I wanted to pick and choose some different members and I want to save this selection to recall it later, over on the right above my clear and select all buttons that have always been here, I now have a save and a load. If I wanted to save this selection, I would hit the Save button, and it'll come up and ask me what do I want to name this selection list. I'm just going to call this CNC Members, and you'll notice by default it, it loads into the Lists folder inside the job. So by default, these lists are saved with the job. If you wanted to save it to your desktop or to another location, you could do so, but then those lists are not saved with the, with the actual job. So I can save that, and if I cleared that selection and I want to bring it back, I can just go load, and again, it's going to default to your list folder in the job. So I can select my CNC members I just saved, and it'll load that selection back in for me. If I have other parts selected and I load this selection list, it will add to the selection. It does not clear the original members I had selected. If I came to the submaterial list and loaded this selection list as well, it still selects these main material parts because in my case I have the use member mark for member main material in the model turned on, which, which makes these main material marks the same as my member marks. When it's looking for, through the selection list, it just matches the marks and selects them. Once I save this list, and let's say I download these pieces, I can also, I don't have to just use this in my CNC configuration. Once this list is saved, I can load this list in multiple locations, including the model. So I can come over to my reports, and I can run a material summary by detail. And I can load my members I just downloaded and run my report on just those selected members. I can also come over to drawing conversion, let's say, and let's say I want to export just the individual details for those pieces. I can load, I can export just the DXF or DWGs of those individual details if I wanted to send those as well. Let's go into the model now. And if I loaded my selection list right now in the model, to do that, I go to my edit pull down. I have load selection, save selection, and edit selection. If I were to load my CNC members that I had in my for my CNC members dialog window, it'll ask me in the model, what do I want to select? Members, group members, or material? I'm going to select members, and I can see that in my model, my members are selected. If I loaded this selection list again and said I wanted to select material, because in my submaterial it did select the main materials, I can tell down here my item selected there's nothing selected. And that's because it still depends on the visibility of the material to be selected, just like any other time when you select something in SDS2. So if I turn this model to solid and try that again, select material. Now I have the actual main materials selected for those members. Another thing I will point out is your selection filter does affect what can be selected with your selection lists. So if this was set to let's say holes and I wanted to load my selection 
for my material, nothing is selected because my selection filter will, is only set to holes. So that is something that you will have to pay attention to. To save a selection in the model, I can select a area of the model here and say edit save selection. Now in this case it's asking me what do I want to save because I made a window of multiple selections, materials and members. It's asking me do I want to save members, group members or material to my selection list. If I say members, it's going to save the member number and the member piece mark in the list. If I say group members, it'll save any group member numbers and group member piece marks into the selection list. And if I just say material, it's only going to save the material piece marks in that selection list. So if I load members, or if I save members, and call this issue one, members, I can load this back in and it picks by members, it'll pick the exact same member numbers that I had selected. If I loaded this exact same one in again, but said group members, because it, I'm telling it to select group members, it's looking at the member number in that list and assuming it's a group member number. So it's gonna select this group member number, which is member number one, this GM94, because I had member one selected originally. If I, if I selected just this B11 and said save selection, and I'm only going to save the material. If I then came back and loaded that selection list, and I said I wanted to select members, it selects all members with that piece mark because there's no, I did not save this originally as a member selection list, so there's no member number in that list. It'll select every member with that piece mark that's visible. That's visible. If I made a selection here, I'll just grab, a, grab an area of the model here and said save, I'm going to save the material call this issue two material and I reloaded that as material you'll notice that it's selected it's selecting a lot more than what I originally had selected and it's also selecting all these different angles over here that's because if you select by material and there's no by material there's no member number so there, it's picking every material that matches that mark in the view Let's say I wanted to select some members here. I'll use I'll just use the original issue one that I had selected there. I can then go back to my main menu and I can download. I'll load that issue one members and I can download those members that I had selected in the model in my download list. So I can down I can download those. I can also use these selection lists in the middle of commands as well for selecting anything that needs to be selected for a command. So if I came into my update status and went to, let's say, submitted for approval, I can either do by area and load it or by piece mark, and I can load that issue one members, say OK, and I can update my submitted for approval date for that, that selection window or that selection list that I created. Another, another tip or trick you can do with this is if you load your gather sheets, if you load one part per sheet, and you name the sheet, the gather sheets themselves, the part marks, 
if you saved, by default when you're plotting those, those gather sheets, you can't sort by sequence. But I can sort by sequence like a submaterial list, let's say in my, sub, in my CNC submaterial. So if I came in here and hid all but sequence one, and selected all these and saved this as sequence one material, I could then come down to my plotting and plot my gather sheets. And again, I have to clear that selection because everything was selected to begin with. And then I can load my sequence one material and I can plot just the sheets for my parts for sequence one. So this is a nice little trick if this is the way you load your gather sheets. And that's possible because the selection list just has piece marks and the, the sheet list is the same piece mark. To edit piece mark or to edit these lists, if you're in the model or, or a selection list, um, you can just save over a list. You can go do edit, you can load a selection, and you can use your shift and control to add members to it and just go up and save, call it the same thing, and save over it to replace it. Now if I load that one again, load it by members, it's going to load all those extra members I saved over it with. You can also use the edit selection, and it brings up the list of all the members in that selection list. If you notice on the right I have a save as so I can make changes and save this as a different name. I can also add or delete. Uh, to delete you can select or select multiple and delete them from the list. To add, it's going to have you add one line at a time. You can type in a member number and the member numbers do have to have the brackets around them just like you see in the model for the member numbers. So if I wanted to add member number 34 I could do that. If I only have member number 34 in this entry it'll only be able to select member number 34. So if I selected by material, or if I selected a list that did not have a member number in it, it would not be able to select that member number because there's no piece mark. If I added a member number and a piece mark, let's say, and I save that, it'll be able to load in a selection list uh, if it had member numbers in that selection list, it would be able to select member number 34, or if it was just a piece mark selection list, you would select, it would be able to select B17. In the model, this would select member number 34. You can also just add just a piece mark, whether it be, you know, a main piece mark like this, or an angle piece mark, or anything like that, and this would only select the, it would select all members with that piece mark, or just the material that had that piece mark on it. It wouldn't be able to select an individual member in the model. So you can make your changes to selection lists this way. You can also navigate to them in your uh, job itself. So if I find my job here and find my lists folder, again, the, here's all my, my uh, selection lists. I can come in here and I can open these in WordPad or Notepad, and they're just a text document with all the piece marks in it. If I wanted to add to this or delete from it, I could do that. Um, if you had some way of creating these, these lists from an Excel or something like that, you could generate just a text file with the piece marks in it and save that and use that as well in your selection lists. That is going to be the webinar on save and loading of selection lists. If you do have any questions about anything you saw or anything that I was possibly unclear on or did too fast and would like to see it again, give us a call at support. Call your support reps and we can easily walk you through anything that I would have missed. Um, again, thanks for attending and have a great day.